Hello students, our today's topic is teachers preparation before class. Let's start our discussion starting from the introduction. Management is the process of reaching organizational goal by working with and through other people and other organizational resources. Management highlights three common elements with which management is concerned. Number one, goal and objectives. Number two, limited resources and number three, people. Sport management is the management of those organizations whose major domain of operation is sport and physical activity. Sport management is a social entity involved in the sport industry. It is good directed with a consciously structured activity system and a relatively identifiable boundary. The teacher should prepare himself well in advance for both theory as well as practical classes. He should plan daily program. He must be well prepared with his lesson. He should read and write the topic or have good practice of the skill to be taught and think of a few suitable examples and drills before going to the class. The teacher should get the ground marked well in advance before class reports for a better class setting. All lines should be kept fresh so that the play field looks attractive. Necessary equipment should be kept ready. The teacher should be properly dressed as per weather condition. During winters, a track suit with sports shoes as during summer, a t-shirt with half pen are more suitable. The teacher should be groomed, appropriately dressed and must appear smart and active. Women teacher should also be dressed suitably. A uniform may not be prescribed because of local traditions and social customs. Now here comes teacher's preparation before the class. The teacher should prepare himself well in advance for both theory as well as practical classes. He should plan daily program. He must be well prepared with his lesson. He should read and write the topic or have good practice of the skill to be taught and think of a few suitable examples and drills before going to class. Now here comes lesson plan. A lesson is a blueprint of the line of action to be adopted by the teacher in a class. N.L. Bosing, while explaining the meaning of a lesson plan, has stated that Lesson plan is the little given to the statement of the achievements to be realized and the specific means by which these are to be attained as a result of the activities engaged in during the period the class spends with the teacher. Lesson is a detailed format of what the teacher intends to teach and how to teach. Lister B. Stans has very aptly summed up that a lesson is actually a plan of action. It therefore includes the working philosophy of the teacher, his knowledge of philosophy his information about and understanding of his pupil, his comprehension of the objective of education, his knowledge of the materials to be taught, and his ability to utilize effective methods. Lesson, in fact, involves mental visualizations, mental rehearsal, and mental preparation with an intention to achieve some specific predetermined objective and then deciding the manner as to how the same is to be presented before the class. Now here comes the basic preparation for lesson plan. 
Lesson planning is essentially an experience in anticipatory teaching. Instead of being any help to the teacher, unplanned lesson will rather confuse the teacher as well as the students. The basic preparations for lesson plan which must be observed are 1. Proper and careful planning. The lesson plan should not be so rigid that it cannot adapt to any change. Rather, it should have flexible approach so that the teacher can mold the same as per the need and requirement of the students. Number 2. Arranging the teaching materials. The teaching materials should be carefully selected and arranged in proper sequence. This will help the teacher to conduct the teaching process smoothly in accordance with the plan. Number 3. Mastery over the subject matter. The teacher should have complete and comprehensive knowledge of the subject matter. He should construct lesson plan only after achieving mastery over the subject. Number 4. Following the principle of readiness. Before any effective learning may take place, it is imperative that the students are ready to learn. They should be mentally ready to absorb what the teacher is teaching. Number 5. Encouraging active participation. The lesson plan should provide enough scope for active interaction with involvement of the students. Number 6. Selecting activities as per age and sex of the students. The activities should be planned keeping in view the age of the students. Toddlers cannot be made to undertake the activity requiring strength or stamina. And high school students will not enjoy the play activities made for tiny tots at all. Similarly, the gender difference should also be kept in mind. Boys may prefer to perform strenuous exercise whereas girls may not be even inclined to participate in such activities. Number 7. Repetition and Recapitulation Repetition and recapitulation help the students in memorizing the lesson. Recapitulation not only enables a student to recall or remember what has been learned, it also helps the teacher in evaluating the effectiveness of his or her teaching. Number 8. Limbering or cooling down. In physical education, while structuring a lesson plan pertaining to any physical activity, it is very important to bring the student back to normal condition. Number 9. Effective summarization. The conclusion of the lesson should be preceded with effective discussion and removal of doubts, etc., for ensuring clarity in thoughts. Number 10. Formulating specific objectives. As a basic rule, the teacher should first of all formulate or set out some general as well as specific objectives to be achieved and then proceed to develop the lesson so as to achieve those objectives. Number 11. Adopting child-centered approach. Through every teaching lesson, the teacher strives to transfer or pass on the knowledge to the students. Number 12. Adequate warming up. While devising any activity lesson plan, it should be kept in mind that the proper and adequate warming up is the final essential step. Warming up promotes physical as well as mental readiness. Number 30. Fostering creativity. Children learn more when their creative abilities are properly utilized. By fostering creativity, the lesson plan ensures wholehearted participation by the students. And this will certainly bring out the best in them. Number 14. Providing effective correlation. By effective correlation of the teaching with other subjects or with daily life situation or happening, the teacher will be able to make the process of learning interesting and absorbing for the students. Number 15. Following the principle of progression. Lesson plan should provide for teaching from simple to complex. It should proceed from known to unknown and from concrete to abstract. Number 16. Achieving the ultimate objectives. 
While preparing a lesson plan, it should be ensured that the lesson is a step further towards the achievement of the ultimate goal or objectives. That is the harmonious all-round development of the pupil. Finally, number 17. Introducing novelty and variety. If the students are taught by adopting some method or technique repeatedly, they will become bored. A teacher by introducing novelty and variety in his lesson plan can make the teaching more attractive. Now here comes skill lesson. In skill lesson, different situations are provided for learning which are taught through verbal instruction as well as demonstration. The skill lesson includes following steps. Preparation. The first step is to create a base for the particular skill to be taught. It includes verbal as well as physical and body movement. Presentation of the skill. A good presentation helps in creating clear mental picture about the skill. Description of the rules. Rules should be clearly explained and described. Practice. Skill learning cannot bring fruitful results without its practice. Correction. During practice, any mistakes should be corrected at the beginning. Second practice. Another chance should be given to the student to practice the right movement. Application. The real situation where the particular learned skill is to be applied, it should be made familiar to the students. The basic step which have to be followed for the skill lesson is mentioned below. Skill lesson plan. There are two plans, general lesson plan and specific lesson plan. And under specific lesson plan, there are athletics and games. And under athletics, there are two plans, that is, teaching lesson plan, coaching lesson plan. And under games, there are also two plans, that is, teaching lesson plan and coaching lesson plan. Model format of general lesson plan. Lesson number, pupil or teacher's name, role number, lesson, activity or skill, game events, general purpose, equipments, specific purpose. In model format of general lesson plan, there will be a table, serial number, duration, subject matter, command, technique and procedure. Then there will be grade and finally the signature of the supervisor. Markings of the codes. The teacher should get the ground market well in advance before class reports for a better class setting. All lines should be kept fresh so that the play field looks attractive. It is good plan to have two or three parallel lines of about 60 to 80 feet in length drawn 20 to 30 feet apart. A few squares and rectangles and two three circles of 12 to 15 fit radius marked permanently for the class. Necessary Equipments and Suitable Uniform Necessary equipment should be kept ready such as balls, bats, rackets, sticks, vans, lesium, dumbbells, etc. should be brought out of the storeroom in adequate number and later on return back. The ball should be well inflated and ready to use. It is better to have an equipment box or basket or a net in which the equipment can be brought out from the storeroom. This all should be done before the class in order to save valuable time of the students and for the teacher. The teacher should be properly dressed as per weather conditions. During winters, a track suit with Sport shoes and during summer, a t-shirt with half pants are more switchable. If a full sleep shirt is used, the sleeves should be rolled up. It is advisable to remove the cap and sunglasses, etc. during the class. 
Remember that a good teacher frequently participates in the activities with the student. Leather shoes, sandals, etc. should be avoided. Pan, paper, keys, mobile phone, etc. should be removed from the pocket during activity classes. The teacher should be well groomed, appropriately dressed and must appear smart and active. Unsuitable and loose uniform cannot arouse interest among the students. Women teachers should also be dressed suitably. A uniform may not be prescribed because of local traditions and social customs. Half sleeves kurta with shirt during summer and tracksuit during winter may be worn. In some areas, salwar kurta with trim dupatta may be popular. Where saris are worn, loose ends should be tucked in to avoid coming in the way of free movements. Carrying umbrellas, bags and holding on to handkerchief should be avoided. Further, it is better to have uniformity in the color of the dress used by the student. The uniformity in dress has a great demonstration value and it also develops group feeling among the students. Now here comes the conclusion. The art of class management is acquired through proper in size, involvement, understanding, intelligence, resourcefulness, interaction and sincere efforts. A successful teacher is one who molds the class environment to the best advantage by visualizing and accessing the development of situation and redesigning the plan. Class management is the skillful handling of the class by a teacher so that desired goals can be achieved. It is a method of arranging teaching and learning scenario for the fruitful result. This much for today. Thank you so much.